Hello everybody, it is Michael here, back with another video, and in today's video, we're going to be talking about what's next for the New York Knicks. Back to Doncic. Doncic pulls up, three-pointer, bang, bang, it's good, Doncic wins the game at the buzzer. What you preach, I guess about it talking trash, uh -huh. now they want to pose with me like, uh-uh, not so fast. <laughs> The Knicks had a very, very successful 2021 NBA season, defeating all the odds that everyone gave to them, making the playoffs for the first time in a while, and they looked great. While the first round was very disappointing as they got destroyed by the Atlanta Hawks, that was a team that eventually made the Eastern Conference Finals and had a real chance at making the NBA Finals. So I think there's absolutely no shame in that, and they should just be happy that they made it as far as they did. It was a great season, but now we need to ask how they improve and where they go from here. The Knicks have a lot of options this offseason. They have a ton of people coming off the books, a ton of people that they're going to want to re-sign, and a ton of people that they are going to be looking at in the free agent market. I do think it's very, very interesting to see what they're going to do in this offseason because there's many core pieces that will be free agents, and they'll have some big decisions coming up. Guys like Derrick Rose, Alec Burks, Nerlens Noel, Reggie Bullock. These are all guys who played crucial roles on the team last year. But these are also all guys who are going to be looked at by many other teams and are going to be getting contract offers. So let's look at guys who I think are must keeps for them. Guys who they may be able to lose, but they'd probably want to keep. And then guys who I'd want off the roster. I would definitely want to keep Nerlens Noel. I think he was very, very important to the defense of this team last year. While Tom Thibodeau and his culture is the main reason why this defense was so good, Nerlens Noel was a big part of it. Mitchell Robinson is a guy who has dealt with some injuries. So getting someone like Nerlens Noel back who could just be a safe guy who knows how to play his role very very well I think is incredibly important I would also do a lot to try and keep Derrick Rose on the roster he's a veteran and he's someone who I think you need on this team because of the leadership he can bring we saw it in the playoffs when uh, when RJ Barrett and when Julius Randle were really struggling Derrick Rose stepped up and proved that he can still really play so those are the two main guys I would try to keep I would also definitely go after Alex Alec Burks and Reggie Bullock. I think these are two important guys to the team and I think they bring things that they really need and that they will miss a lot if they end up losing out on these guys. Reggie Bullock's 3 and D ability is something that's very very important to this team and they're definitely going to need him and then Alec Burks is a guy who can come off the bench and really get you a bucket, creates his own shot very well and I think getting him back will be important. Guys you can lose uh, definitely Frank Neal Aquina he's just kind of whatever he, he's someone who was really disappointing not the guy you wanted him to be and at this point I'd rather just see him in a new role in a new opportunity in a different place so even though you would have loved to have him improve and uh, Tom Thibodeau seemed like he was going to be the perfect guy to revitalize Frank Neal Aquina's career it clearly just didn't work out and I think it's time to move on from him I would definitely also move on from El Alfred Payton he just didn't fit with this roster and he really compounded the issues they had with shooting the ball I'd much rather try to get a shot creating point guard uh, and someone who can play make than someone like Alfred Payton who's more of a defensive guy and while he can play make his gravity isn't that good because while he's a good passer he's not a threat on the offensive side of the ball at all so he's not a threat in the pick and rolls teams are just going to go under and even if he's hitting his outside shots no one's worried about Alfred Payton shooting the ball so I would definitely look to get rid of those type of guys and then someone like Taj Gibson uh, I would keep I mean it's not a big deal but I do think his veteran presence is something that's important and I do think with a team that uh, is compiled of a lot of young pieces it is good to keep veterans like that and it's good to keep someone who's familiar with Tom Thibodeau knows the culture and any new rookie coming in he can immediately install that culture in and teach him the New York way so they do have a lot of important free agents and I'm really really interested to see what they do with that. 
because they can go a, a couple of different ways. They can keep the guys on this roster, kind of just run it back. But they also only have about $55 million guaranteed, which gives them a lot of flexibility to go after some big free agents as well. There's a lot of different options for them right here. I'll name some more big names, some more low key names, and just some guys who I think fit well with this roster. So some bigger names would be a guy like Kyle Lowry, who I think would fit great into this team, fits into the defensive culture, and also really helps their issues with shooting and playmaking because that are that is the two biggest things that they need to address this offseason shooting and playmaking both in the draft and in free agency i think you'll be able to acquire acquire some of that and i think someone like kyle lowry would be beautiful on this team setting up guys like rj barrett julius randall playing hard on the defensive side of the ball he does has his drawbacks being a very old point guard and personally Personally, if I was Kyle Lowry, I would try to go to a team that's more going in like a championship level direction. Try to go to a team like the Clippers or something like that. But if he's cool with just being on a team that's going to be pretty good, then I think the Knicks would actually be a very good option for Kyle Lowry. There's also Goran Dragic, who's a free agent for the Heat. I think he's someone who just like Kyle Lowry helps them a lot with their playmaking and shooting problems. Doesn't fit into the defensive culture as much, but you could definitely get him for cheaper. I would probably try and sign him to a solid like one year contract and maybe do a one plus one with a team option on the second year kind of like the the heat did uh for a bunch of their free agents i think that would be a smart move for them and he would be a really really good add someone who again fixes a lot of their problems can run the pick and roll with guys like julius randall guys like mitchell robinson throw lobs up top and then kick out to shooters great fit right there uh there's also a guy like demar Rosen who would definitely be a more risky uh, selection just due to the fact that he also is not an outside shooter and we saw that get exposed in the playoffs i'm not having enough outside shooting but he definitely helps with their playmaking problem he really showed to be an excellent playmaker last year so i think that's another really really interesting ad and i could definitely see that either working out super well or being a complete failure for them so i'd actually love to see that happen just uh with the spectacle of it i think it would be really really interesting to see demar Derozan rose join the new york Knicks, but I don't know exactly how well it would work it out. You could take a big swing on someone like Victor Oladipo, who we haven't really seen be fully healthy in some years now, but we know he's talented when he's on the court. I wouldn't really suggest many teams to go after Victor Oladipo unless you can get him for like super cheap. Obviously, if he's like a mid-level mid exception guy, then you might as well take the risk and just go with the reward. If it works out, you can get a near all-star caliber player for almost nothing. And then if it doesn't work out, it's whatever. It's only a, uh, about a little less than $10 million. So he's definitely a big risk guy, but I could see that if he wants to go to a bigger market where more eyes are on him, him, then he could go to New York, see how that works out, and maybe revitalize his career. Uh, there's some more low-key guys as well. Those were some of the some of the bigger names for them. You got a guy like Duncan Robinson, obviously straight shooter, really helps their problems quite a lot. Norman Powell, someone who declined his player option, and I think that's a really interesting fit with a Blazers team that is uh, really going in a bad direction. He could join a team like the Knicks who's going in a positive direction. He's a very good shooter, especially from those corners. He's a guy who can shoot around 40% from three, can create his own shot as well. I think he'd be a beautiful fit in New York. Uh, Jalen Brunson will be a restricted free agent. He's someone who has uh, been rumored that they have some interest in and I would love that. I do want him to stay in Dallas. I think he's a really good fit there, but I think for New York's sake, someone like Jalen Brunson, really steady point guard, very, very solid. A guy who was a six man of the year candidate last year. I think he's someone who could fit really, really well. And those are most of the smaller name guys. It's just mainly focusing on getting shooting. And luckily, they're in an era where shooting is more regularly available than it's ever been. There's always so many 3 and D guys because every team can need them. And now that they have cap space, and now that they're not only an attractive market due to just their size and their popularity, but they're an actual good basketball team who has a good culture and is going in the right direction, they're going to be a much more attractive free agent destination than they were in past years. So it'll be easier for them to get those type of guys. But the biggest guy I want to see the New York Knicks get is Lonzo Ball, currently of the New Orleans Pelicans. 
with the pelicans making the trade that they recently did and with all the rumors spiraling around it looks like their main target is going to be kyle lowry this offseason and it looks like they're not going to match anything for lonzo ball so i think the new york knicks should swoop in and get lonzo ball an incredibly talented player someone who has improved every single year and someone who has now become one of the better shooters in the NBA. He was completely misutilized last year. He was in the wrong role, playing next to someone like Eric Bledsoe, who is a complete non-shooter, but getting someone like Lonzo Ball, putting him around a guy like RJ Barrett, who is probably gonna to continue to improve his three-point shot, giving him someone like Julius Randle, who he played a year with, I'm pretty sure. They could have some really good chemistry right there. I think he could definitely get them higher in the fast break points. He's a great open court passer. And then in the half court, he can actually be used in his role as a playmaker, but he can also be an off guard when a guy like RJ Barrett is on fire. He's someone who proved that when you need him to, he can be a three and D player. So I think he's just such a perfect fit in New York because he helps them with playmaking. He helps them with shooting. He fits in defensively. He fits with their timeline with how young he is. And you could probably get him for not that expensive. You're obviously going to have to pay him a good amount of money because a lot of teams are going to be after Lonzo Ball. But I think that's an attractive destination for both sides. I think the Knicks should want that. And I think Lonzo would love to go there because he knows it could unlock his potential. So yeah, I'm really, really excited about the New York Knicks. They got a lot of options going forward. They have the 19th and 21st pick, which I think is very interesting. You can definitely land some talent right there. Uh, some guys I would target is Chris Duarte. He is uh, about 24 years old coming into the draft, which is obviously extremely old, but I think he's incredibly talented. Is a guy who shoots the hell out of the ball and is someone who also has some sock creating abilities, is pretty decent defensively. Trey Murphy the third, I would be shocked if he's there because he's someone who climbs up the draft boards it seems every single day until the draft is actually happening and he's someone who's super talented 3 and D guy uh, I just really want them to address that uh, even though a lot of people are big on getting someone like Sharif Cooper I don't really like that there I would rather have them address playmaking in the offseason I would rather have them address playmaking in free agency where you can get a guy who brings more than playmaking because while I like Sharif Cooper he's a pretty one-dimensional player he's talented but he's got a lot of things to work on and with a team like the Knicks who are trying to win right now and with a coach like Tom Thibodeau who only really plays rookies if they're going to be immediately impactful I would rather just address that flaw in uh, free agency and I'd rather just address the shooting flaw in the draft there's also a guy like Trey Mann who I absolutely love fantastic shot creator a guy who's just a super smooth scorer reminds me a lot of a mix of like CJ McCollum and Kemba Walker kind of I think he's a really underrated prospect and that's another guy who I would love to see in New York but as a whole I would just like them to address shooting and defense you could also go after uh, there's just so many shooters in this draft that you can go after a guy like Corey Kispert. Uh, basically, a lot of the top prospects outside of the defensive guys are more shooting prospects because they are well aware that that's what is valuable in the NBA. So go after guys like that. I would take more NBA ready guys. I wouldn't really go after many projects. And I think you could have a really good team going forward, depending on what you do in free agency, because you can clearly address your flaws with relative ease. And then you can just bounce back with a pretty similar roster with a coach who proved that he can adapt to the modern game, but still make it his style of basketball. And New York's going to be super exciting next year. I'm really, really anticipated to see what they're going to do in the offseason. And I hope it's a good one because I think they could be a really fun team next year. Hoping to see improvement from guys like RJ Barrett, Julius Randle, and the rookies like Emmanuel Quickly. I would love to see them take steps as well. So yeah, that's been the video. It's been What's Next for the New York Knicks. And it's been Michael. Peace out.